off and away they go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on. They get he missed the, the complete bit. <laughs> He's crazy. Side side, Freitas is on the grass on the infield floor. He slices through. He tags her. With the first half of Season 7 in the books, Apex Online Racing's Formula No 2.0 Championship visits Circuit Solder. The first half of the season has been as unpredictable as it has been exciting, with 11 drivers winning in 12 tries. To find out if there's another first-time winner, stay tuned, because all the action from both the initial 40-minute feature and the 25-minute sprint that follows can be seen live as it happens here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Good night, Matag, and welcome to GSRC's Cat Dan to Green. Way up in the press box to bring you our word's eye view is Soup and Crackers. Yours truly, Bill Soup's on, joined by Sean Crackers Ambrose. Amjad Yaman is our director, armed with cameras provided by the Ansel Adams of iRacing, Dougie Beard. As cyberspace flows into your place over the next 15 streamy award-worthy minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to fully appreciate the doubleheader Formula No 2.0 championship event that will immediately follow. Now, Crackers, the last time the AOR brought these little Renaults to Zolder was way back in Season 4 when the fans witnessed Hugo Prado accomplished the rare double, winning both the feature and the sprint races. So since it's been three seasons since we've been here, how about a little refresher course on Zolder? Yeah, Soup, let's take a look at the old circuit Zolder, uh, built in 1963 and hosted the F1 Belgium Grand Prix off and on until about 1984. You know, tragically, though, one of the things that this track is most known for is uh, of course, the death of Gilles Villeneuve back in 1982. Now, over the years, they made numerous safety improvements and renovations uh, and transformed Zolder into the track that we have today. And a lot of those safety improvements, of course, um, come uh, post uh, the death there of Jill. But uh, nowadays, the Blanc Prawn Sprint Series, the Euro Truck, uh, truck uh, Racing, Euro Touring Car Cup, uh, the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series all visit this facility. Um, the Champ Car World Series even visits this track at one point where uh, Sebastian Bourdais actually holds the all-time record here of about 1 minute and 14 seconds. Now, we'll be going quite a bit slower than that in uh, the Formula Renault 2.0 today, but the action won't be diminished. Uh, turn uh, turn 10. Uh, I'm sorry, not turn 10. <laughs> this 10-turn, uh, 4-kilometer layout will feature quite a few challenges all the way around, one of those being the three different chicanes we have on this track that really help spread out the field and, and may bring on a little wing damage on this Formula Renault 2.0. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. With that said, many of these chicanes uh, feature those high curbs and uh, you'll want to stay off them to keep the car aerodynamically pristine. But the best way to get an idea of what this place is really like, let's jump on board the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0 and take a, round, uh, take a trip around Circuit Zolder. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Zolder. Coming down to turn one, the downhill braking makes it hard to get the car to turn into the apex. Because of that, passing isn't always the easiest thing into this corner. That won't stop drivers from trying anyway. Then, switch back and set up for two. This corner and turn three are effectively the same turn in one long arc. Be careful not to drift onto the big curves of the outside, or you could damage your car. Hold to the left and try your best to focus on the exit of turn four. This medium speed turn is critical to your lap time because of it leading onto a fairly long straight. Plus, there's an enticing place to pass at the end of it, but this first chicane will bite you if you come in too hot for an overtake. Whether it's getting a cut course penalty or tearing up your car's floor on the sausage curbs, be careful of its pitfalls. Now we crest gently over the hill and keep the car to the left for the best entry for the second chicane. There's three apexes here, so it's much tougher to get them right. Keep hugging the inside so that the third one lets you get to the power early. Swing it down low through turn seven, and you can take it flat out through the bend. There's one more big crest, and once more, keeping the car on the left side all the way to the grass will give you the best line. The turn eight hairpin will be a popular passing spot since it's one of the few braking zones that isn't a chicane. Some drivers will get you back with an over-under, so be aware of how deep you take it into the corner. As we weave through this little squiggle, we now near the end of the lap. The last chicane can pose some unique problems. Don't get focused on the car ahead if they're pitting in or you'll completely blow the corner. 
Once again, be wary of going fully over the sausage curves or else they'll do some serious damage. Get back to the gas as soon as you feel safe, drift across the track, and you've now finished the lap around Zolder. I'm Jed Yaman on the wheel, Joe Peak on the mic, taking us around the many chicane filled track of Zolder. All right, now let's take a look and see who was the big points winner last time out at Road America. Now, spoiler alert, he leads in the overall points as well, and of course, I'm talking about Adam Tierney. The Formula Mini driver finally picked up his first victory by winning the feature race at Road America. Combine that with a sixth in the sprint, and you get 45 points. Black Adder's Manuel Hoyer went fourth and fifth to sit second on the chart. It was a great points day for Formula Mini. Keep that in mind when we look at the team championship as Christoph Holstein was third best for the day. So far, privateer Mark Usher have, has been all hype and no fight. A 26-point performance of Road America might be the crack in the dam before the points flood. And it was hockey sticks for Rene Osterkamp as a pair of sevens earned the Sim RC driver fifth best for the day. It should be noted also that Scott Newton won the sprint race for Apex Racing UK. So how did all that affect the points championship? And keep in mind that these are raw totals that do not take into account the two drop races that the rules allow for. Having the biggest day at Road America means tyranny increases his point lead. Phil Reed is the only driver with more than one win. The Aperture Racing driver sits, nine, sits second in points, 95 points out. The flying Frenchman, Jean Francois Godin, moves up a spot to third. Tyranny was best at Mosport and leads the championship, but Birdie and a second and uh, second at Mosport is a, is a challenge. I don't know what I'm talking about there. It looks like that got left in from the last script. Shame on somebody for not editing that. After a win in the opening event from CMRC, Tim Birdie has been sinking in the standings. And how about Force Fissy, Evan Emery? He's a tier two driver and he has a fifth overall. And someone needs to proofread these scripts here. But when we look at the Tier 2 Championship, I know this is right because I just wrote this this morning. Imre sits second behind Incline Racing's Ty McLeod. Now, how is that possible? Remember, Tier 2 points are calculated against the other Tier 2 drivers. That's why Ty McLeod can sit behind Imre in the overall standings, but ahead of him in, in the Tier 2 Championship. Force 5C is represented again by the Orange Viking, Knut Martinson. Coming off his Sim Race win at Road America, that is Apex Racing UK Scott Newton in fourth. And how about Sim RC's Prime's Patrick Kessler in fifth? All right, finally, let's get out of here. Looking at the team championship. Remember the Tierney and Holstein? I talked about them having that great points day at Road America. Well, that moves Formula Mini up the up spot into the lead. Reed and his teammate Kerry Nolden had a horrible points day last time out for Aperture Racing, and that team falls back into second. A pair of top two dri top tier drivers. A pair of Tier 2 drivers, let me correct myself there, move up a spot to third for Force Fissy. The Flying Frenchman, piloted by Jean-Francois Godin and Enric Amre, lose altitude, falling to fourth. Sim RC Prime holds station in fifth, while sixth through tenth continue to jockey for positions. All right, if you're still with us, let's move ahead now. <laughs> Crackers, the AOR is always picking up new viewers, so for those joining us for the first time, how about you talk a little bit about the series and race details? Sure, buddy. Let's blaze through that real quick here. We've got series uh, season seven going on here, and this is round seven. It's all about sevens today, round seven of 12. You get two drops uh, over this 12-round season, and that's uh, uh, going to be a, a drop classifies as uh, one feature and one sprint. So uh, you get two two of those each season, and uh, like I said, both combined as to one. So the setups, it's an open setup on these cars, so important. You'll you'll see a pretty good mix of high downforce, low downforce, uh, medium downforce, uh, really uh, all tailored to the driver's style. Now the weather today, let's talk about that because a uh, little bit of a factor. It's 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 a little warm. It's not too bad. It is clear out. And that's good. Uh, it's 21 degrees centigrade and 26 degrees centigrade on track. Um, not a lot of wind, soup. Only about 4.8 kilometers. So that shouldn't be too bad today uh, here on track. Now let's talk about the race details here of this feature. It's 40 minutes. We've got a 40-minute uh, race on hand here for you to get things started. They're out on track qualifying now. Getting those qualifying times in about a minute and 25 seconds 
gets it done. That's fast. That's really fast. If you're down in the low 125s and we will grid up based on this qualifying effort, there'll be one pit stop involved because you don't have enough fuel to make it to the end over 40 minutes. We generally see that happen sometime around the middle to the last third of the race. And the incident cap, 16. 16 incidents will get you disqualified. You definitely don't want that to happen. Guess what? This track, we may pick up some incidents today. There may be some guys pushing it as we uh, close down to the winding uh, uh, last few minutes of this race. The points will pay standard, and they pay all the way back to 20th place in the feature race. As we look at the qualifying going on right now, you see Josh Thompson out there at the top of the chart. There he is again, though, Adam Tierney, the points leader. Man, not only is he is he solid, he's been able to come in, bringing it home in the points every race, but lately he's been really fast. Christian Ketch sitting in third right now. That could change up a bit. Sean, you know, when they designed this track, I think Chicanes or Us had a buy three, get one free sale. Man, there's Chicanes everywhere. Why don't you talk about this track that has about as much flow as a, a guy with a bad prostate? Boy, I, you're not kidding, Soup. Uh, you know, it all starts with the very first one, the Klein chicane, turn uh, turn five, what they call turn five. Uh, Klein is, it's, it doesn't seem, it's really, you can take it in third gear. It's not that bad. What's bad is, is what I like to call the sausage bombs. Uh, the curbing itself is not too bad, but they went ahead and put these, these bombs on top of the, uh, like landmines, uh, IEDs off to the off to the side there, and they put them on top of the curbs. And when you hit one of those things, uh, it can literally send the car in the air. At at the very least, it will damage your wing. You saw that just off to the left and to the right there, as they came through uh, the chicane right there. And it's it's it makes it very very hard to control. And then you get all the way down to turn seven. That's the uh, the next chicane. Um, Turleman Turleman is is another tough one. That's an even tighter chicane. And then the last chicane on this track, the uh, Jackie X uh, chicane there, turn 10, which sets up for the uh, start finish line. The real challenge of that one is, is, well, basically you're carrying all your speed, top speed down into that chicane. You've got to slow the car down, then get it turned at about second gear and getting off of that chicane very, very hard uh, to get the power down without looping the car. And obviously as you're, coming to the finish the last thing you want to do is wind up with a car that's facing in the wrong direction and, and if you're not careful off to the left and then back to the right you try to cut it cut it too close you hit one of those sausage bombs again and you're really really in trouble so the, the chicanes here are about as demanding as any track we go to soon and i talked about the buy three get one free they had that extra one so they decided let's let's go ahead and stick an extra chicane in there on pit entry we have pit stops here today sean and man this place is uh it can be interesting, especially with pit entrance being almost on the racing line. Well, in soup, it's it's one of those pit entries, kind of like Circuit uh, uh, Gilles Villeneuve right. in Canada, where you're you're going full speed, and if you've got somebody right behind you, they don't know you're going in for a pit. It's a little deceptive because it goes straight in right as you go into that turn ten. You just keep going <laughs> through the turn. And like I said, if someone's following real closely, can catch them out. It can be kind of confusing. Once you get in there, it's a sharp left-hander and then back to the right just before you hit the cone. And then once you hit the cone and get the car slowed down, there's a, a safety barrier right there that you gotta have to navigate through to get into the pit lane. So it's gonna be a very, very slow trip down a very long pit lane soup. It covers the whole length of that front straightaway down into Erst. And actually, your pit stop will be longer if you're following somebody because your braking zone for the corner comes before the braking zone for pit entry. So you'll have a faster pit stop if you actually have some clear air in front of you. And Sean, uh, we, you, you, we talked about pit stops and we talked about the curbing and all the chicanes. Put those things together, you're looking at people picking up some damage somewhere. And one of the things about the chicanes here also, we've done a lot of races. I've covered a ton of races in like the in little MX-5. Um, where at least if you go two by two through the chicane, you can you can at least go over the curbs, avoid an instant. Yeah, maybe you pick up a slowdown penalty. But here, if you go too wide through one of these things, if you have to go off track, you damage your car. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a very very real um, uh, reality. A very real reality. It's a very real consequence of doing that. Um, now. There, there is a lot of runoff, a lot of dirt to get off into. Just you see it right here on screen, uh, you know, where you can survive these. But 
it all comes at a cost and damaging this under tray or any part of the wing here is really really going to affect the handling of the car and put you in a position you probably don't want to be in and that's from running behind trying to catch everybody and obviously if you're a little banged up you're not going to catch anybody real well looks like qualifying is just about everybody got that in look at that tim birdie after picking up a win in the first round look at that he is back up there now sitting second let's go ahead and run down your starting grid as we have a a full field to go through and a standing start means we have to hustle through take it two at a time josh thompson and tim birdie on the front row sean row two christian to catch and mark usher points leader adam tierney inside of phil reed who's second in points row four manuel hoyer and jeroen de quartel scott newton coming off a, a sprint race win is in ninth rookie lubavir moritz in tenth all right, row six, Knut Martinson and Bruno Dometer. Ty McLeod and Enric Andre, 13th and 14th. All right, row eight, Patrick Kessler and Lee Robinson. Next row, Lawrence Sudden Strike, DeRike and Yuri Morjak. Row 10, Harrison Finch and Evan Emre. Hidden Blackjack is Stefan Herman and Stefan Larkamp. Seems like those Stefans always race close together. <laughs> they do. And row 12, Alexander Waldo, Miguel Antolin. Caster Thon and Sylvia Hurt go 25th and 26th. All right, I'll take the last three here. Alexis Merloso in 27th, Daniel Barrow in 28th, and Andrew Greenhog. Uh, is that Greenhog? Greenhog. There we go. Andrew Greenhog in 29th. That's a new name we're not familiar with. We'll get to learn more about him. Hopefully, he'll have a good race. Hopefully, he can finish on the lead lap. Put him on the pole for the 25-minute sprint that will follow this race. But right now, all of our eyes are on pole sitter Josh Thompson. It is round seven of 12. We are starting the second half of the seventh season here in the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. Tim Birdie had a win in the opening round. It's been hard sledding from then on, but right now he hopes to have a good result as well. Keep an eye on Christian to catch Mark Usher again. We talked about him in the pre-race show more hype than results so far, but we'll see how he does right now. We know, Lord knows he is fast as we wait for all the drivers to come. Notice those long shadows that they grow long and thin under the yes. setting Belgian thumbs, uh, sun here. Track Notice, Go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say noticeable omission today. No Sara Dove. I felt that when I was going through there. In fact, we are we do have one bird. Harrison Finch is here, but we don't have Dove. So still waiting for the number three car to get out there. Christian to catch the Red Devil racing driver. Waiting for him, and he finally takes that spot. Christian obviously wanted to make sure that the GSRC commentators get their commentator bonus for getting through the entire field before they go green. We've done it. Everything's done. We're ready to go racing. So gather up the chickens. Take cover behind the cows. Because the second half of season seven is underway. And look at the run from Tim Bernie as he tries to force the issue on the outside through one. Can't get it done. Our leader right now, Josh Thompson, drops down into second to catch. Usher and Reed round out your top five. Soup and they are still two by two all the way through turn two and down into turn four they go. All right. Now getting through four shouldn't be too tough if they can manage that. There's a lot of runoff area then, but then it's a matter of everybody behaving as they get down to the first chicane. You got to get them woed up. It's tough to go through too wide. So far the leaders are through safe. Everybody getting through as they go single file. A couple guys are slow, but Sean, hey, 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 looks good. Uh, Dometer back here fighting with Eric Andre right now, and uh, that's a battle for 12th just to stay in it. Those two, a uh, little bit of contact there early. Now they work down. Our leaders go down into corner number eight. This sets up another pretty good straight here as they head down into the final chicane. What do you got? Yeah, it's it just the battle between Andre and Dometer. I don't think this is going to end well. Neither one of them want to give. Look at that. They got to get it sorted out here pretty soon. Yeah, and then there's Tom no. McLeod putting himself in the mix. And oh boy, Dometer almost gets Andre. Andre finally gets around, though. Knack puts him up to 12th. Now Dometer going to fight back here coming down the straight. This going on for 13th. There, you can see the battle well up ahead of them in the very front. There was a great battle for six, and that continues when we... And there we go. It was Tierney. This is what I was worried about. Our points leader has had trouble. Oh, he boy, got, and everybody coming through there. It was He got into it with Manuel Hoyer. This was been going on for the entire front straight and then carried through. 
And Kessler and Lawrence DeReich also on the end of that just getting by. They get off course. Watch this as he's sitting there. You'll see them come through. They'll split. Yep. And then both of those cars spin. Yeah. DeReich got a little bit into Kessler and they got touched. And that took them off. But boy, your points leader having a big hit. A big hit and damage to the front wing suit. Not good. Not good. That's going to cost him in the pits, and that's going to cost him time on track indeed. Riding with Lawrence DeReich, you see the, da the, boy, the contact there with Kessler. Now, remember, in this series, we don't show it in the points. Those are raw points that we show you. There are two drop races, so this is something that takes a little bit of the sting out here for Tierney. He knows that at least maybe this can be one that he just throws away. Let's go up front and show you what's going on. As we look at Tim Birdie racing in second. That's in the yellow car. He's chasing Josh Thompson as they're now working lap number three. Back in third position is Christian to catch. There's a little bit of a gap now to Mark Usher in fourth, who's racing all by himself. And then Phil Reed. A good chance for Reed to pick up some in the points with his main competition, Tierney, the guy he's chasing, having trouble. You know, Soup Scott Newton had big trouble also. Lost him a lot of spots. He got caught up in the chicane here. We're watching it on the replay now. He blows the chicane, and then when he tries to get back to the track, he spins the car. That shot him down the field 10 spots when he finally got going again. Here we go. And you see, he just misses his turn in there, and it just it ends in tears, unfortunately. Don't see any damage initially on the car though but that front wing might be a little bent up in fact it is he's got some right wing damage yes he does and that'll have to be fixed even though that may not slow him down although i think that that damage probably will slow him down on the track he'll need to fix that in the pits let's go to fifth position real quick this is a battle this is dick quartel and phil reed quartel has got this position phil reed falls back nice pass from dick quartel reed has not done those they work their way down into the first chicane. Let me correct myself. They're working through 10 right now. Now they go down the main straight, finishing up lap number three. They start working on lap number four. Now let's stay on Reed here as he's got a good run. Is he going to force the issue into one? No, he is not. We ride looking off the back of Dave Cortell. Sean, Jeroen Dave Cortell, he's one of those guys we've been expecting He's a better racer than his than his results would indicate. Yeah, definitely. I, <laughs> some people are snake bit, Soup. Yeah. I think he's one of them, but so far, so good. Up three spots here early. Here we go. Let's go to him again, because here comes the pass. This is going to go too wide into the first chicane as Reed tries to get the spot back, and he does. Sean, it looks like he can get a draft out of, out of a corner four, that long straight, before you get down into the five to make a run down there. Wouldn't you think? Am I right on that? Yeah, no, no, you definitely can. It's just you, you got to hit the braking zone just right because you don't want to miss the Klein chicane. That battle you're looking up there, that's the first real battle we have as they run. One, two, three, four are pretty passive right now. We can stay on this one a little bit more as Portel is, my goodness, he is right behind Reed. What my dad used to say on him, tighter than a new pair of shoes on a rainy day. So they work their way in through 10. Pretty quiet behind him to round out the rest of your top 10. Yeah, well, Soup, they've gone line of stern basically throughout the whole field. Everybody just trying to settle in and tackle this track right now. We've talked about how difficult it is. I think the uh, the, the drivers have acknowledged that at this point. Oh, and Ty McLeod has had a yep. spin. Looks like a spin all by himself. You talked about racing uh, all by himself. He was in 13th position. He just lost that one. Yeah, and, you know, I was just about to talk about him as Ty had had a pretty good run going. He was picking up spots, but... He just misses the, the entry of uh, Urs there, and the car slides on him. It's not hard to get that car to slide off. He was probably downshifting at the wrong time, and it caught and, and grabbed him and, and then spun it. A lot of cars get through as a result of that. Yeah, McLeod falls way down the racing order now. You can see him racing in 22nd. That's nine spots. That's a little mistake cost him. All is going on behind our leader. Josh Thompson, we look at ninth position. 
Now this is the next one. Look at this battle here. That's the familiar yellow and blue car, the Force Fissy machine. Oh my goodness, it's Martinson. Is. He's going to lose a position not only to the rookie Lubomir Morris, but he's also going to lose one to Lee Robinson as well. How about Lee Robinson? Sean started uh, in 16th position, up six spots in 10th. Yeah, Lee's moving. He's moving, you know, and a lot of the guys behind him are moving soup. I mean, this this really uh, good battles going on back here. Oh, and I think, let's say as we ride on board with Lee right now, look at him taking the good entries in, almost a defensive line up in front from, from Morris. And now he's got a real good run, but can't get it done. They work through four. Let's stay on this a bit longer if the rest of the field will cooperate. Oh, look at the drive that Morris gets off of four, though. I don't think yeah. that's going to oh, give Robinson but he goes, a chance. But he goes a little wide there. He goes a little wide, and that uh, really kind of killed his momentum just a bit. But now Lubomir, uh, we, we've seen already here in this season, Lubomir, uh, yeah, he may be a rookie, but he's not a rookie driver. And uh, he is moving right now. And we got a problem with Finch. Oh, Finch got tapped there. By another rookie, Jerry Mor yeah. Morjack got him. Yet they were side by side trying to go through the same chicane, and it did not work out. Now, I'm looking at it real quick, so I'm going to give you my opinion. It looks like Morjack was about as far to the left as he could be. The car has mass. It has to be somewhere. Just from a quick look, I would say that uh, Finch tried to come across, and there just wasn't room. Not room in that chicane. That's the tightest no. chicane on course right there. And the problem is, if you leave each other enough room down there, it just kills your lap time. You're just yeah. crushing each other. How about a quick peek in at second position right now? This is Tim Birdie. Remember, he qualified second. Here comes a former champ behind him, though, Christian Decatch. He's had a quiet season seven so far. Racing back there about three car lengths back. right over the helmet of Christian, the Red Devil Racer. Boy, it really shows you. This one and Spa, you can really tell that you're in Belgium. A lot of trees here, a beautiful, what a pretty track. Lots of old tree soup. They've been yeah. around for centuries, <laughs> indeed. Feel like a, a tank battalion might emerge out of them there. <laughs> Very possibly. <laughs> Just don't, uh, okay, I'm staying away from that. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to keep the international piece here. That's Soup. right. <laughs> hey, Soup, real yeah. quick, we'll get just a second. I want to give a shout out to the guys over at iRacing Drivers World on Facebook, uh, giving them a shout out. Scott Rupp and the boys over there, they're big fans, and uh, they watch these AOR broadcasts every Friday. So uh, howdy, guys. Hope you're watching. But right now, if they are watching, they are watching a Red Devil racer try to put his pitchfork into the back of Tim Birdie. Of course, I'm talking about Christian to catch. Hey, Soup, okay, got, got okay, we're watching Tim Birdie right now. We gotta go to Enric Andre okay. and Manuel Hoyer. Hoyer's really trying to pull an overtake on Andre. Andre's got some wing damage that's really hurting the downforce on the front of that car. You'll see it when he comes to one of these chicanes. Having trouble hanging on. Manuel Hoyer trying to find a way around and get this spot back. He wants to get back to seventh where he started. It's proving tough right now because Enric is really just giving him the business here, playing uh, playing Mr. Oh. Defense. He moves in front of him there. He has to, though, to get that chicane just right. And, uh, boy, this is uh, this has been a real chore for Andre. He's not been able to, uh, to I'm sorry, for, uh, for Enric, Andre, he's not been able to find a way to get around him here yet. I understand that you want to move over to get that entrance right, but I'm not a big fan of taking the defensive line and then changing your mind right before you get there. Let's stay on this a minute here. Let's see what Manuel Hoyer can do. Yeah, actually, Hoyer's got a little bit of damage on his front wing also. And then coming into the picture right behind him is Lubomir Morris. Lee Robinson has had a spin oh, no. right in front of uh, Knute Martinson. Getting around him also, Bruno Dometer. Yeah, and that was uh, that might have been a break bias thing. Maybe he made an adjustment or something, but he locks him up there coming down to the turn suit. That was there in the uh, in the hairpin of the name I will not try to pronounce right now. Are you breaking at turn in there, Sean? If, if you're really fast, is this? Uh, yeah. Or do you, do you, yep. are you? Yeah, that's always tough for me. 
I think that's one of the things that separate. I mean, I know these guys are all top top drivers, so it's hard to relate to the the guy that is talent challenge. But that's one of the toughest thing is to turn the car in while you're still braking and keep the rear end under you. I've been there. Uh, we've got some pit stops going down already. Uh, maybe a little early, maybe not, but probably more to do with the damage. Finch is in, Tierney's in, Scott Newton's in. A normal pit stop should be about four and a half seconds. A lot of these guys are in for damage, which is going to mean at least nine seconds probably for a stop. Yeah, these are yeah. all long. Finch was a 12.6 seconds there in the box, so that's obviously a, a repair there. <laughs> yeah. 27 minutes of racing to go probably in their window it will be real close but really if you're racing a car that's damaged you want to keep it out there as long as you can and as soon as you think you can get to the end with a stop that's when you bring it in you don't want to bring your car in no matter how sick it is for medicine until you know that it's going to be the last trip to the doctor you know we're watching the battle between andre and and hoyer hoyer did finally get around him but now uh Lubomir Morris uh, looks to be the next driver to want to try and get around Andre here. Yeah, I knew that one was just a matter of time before before Hoyer found his way around. How about another good one? Remember we were talking about the battle for second? Well, Bertie's pulled away a little bit. To catch has fallen back, but here he comes. Mark Usher now in fourth is looking to see if he can make a move to get onto a podium spot as he's working on the back of Christian to catch. Now they work up, they've gone through the first chicane. Now they come up to this one, which is a legitimate chicane, although it almost feels like corners there, but they loop around here. Yeah, hit those curbs. Hit those curbs and it'll definitely feel like a real chicane suit. Yeah. <laughs> Turlman is tough, and uh, here we are down into the hairpin now. And now they're back on the throttle. Now this will give you an indication of where pit entrance is as they are full song here. You'll see it off to the off to the right hand side as we ride on board with us. There it is right there. Is anyone gonna bite? No. But you can see how you can just run that car in there real fast. Usher remains in fourth. Birdie in second, sandwich between them, Christian to catch. How about we drop back real quick, look at fifth, because Phil Reed and De Cortel, remember we were looking at that battle earlier? Well, now Reed's back out in front. De Cortel looking for a way around. Enric Andre in, Evan Emre is also in, Soup. Andre in, probably get that damage fixed up. The Flying <laughs> Frenchman teamed up with uh, to catch. Lee Robinson picking up another spot, heading down into Erst. He gets it. He passes Stefan Larkamp there. That'll put him back up to 12th. He lost two spots on that spin. He gets two of them back. Haven't really seen a big name come in yet with a stop. Sean, how about a hard charger? Why don't we look at the drive racing in, I think, 14th position? Is this a... Antolin, it's, actually, he's in, I guess he's, yeah. Yep. Miguel. Gosh, what a good run. Yeah, well, he stayed out of trouble, Soup. In fact, everything on that car is still straight. So, aerodynamic uh, speaking, he is, he's doing well. He's, uh, Kessler having a, having a bit of a recovery drive after a little bit of uh, avoidance, wreck avoidance there earlier is holding on. And then here comes Ty McLeod. This is a driver recovering from trouble early and Ty right up on the wing there of Kessler, right up into his gearbox. Ty pushing hard here as they come to the start finish line. Your top 19 drivers have yet to pit as we look at Manuel Hoyer. As oh, he's there's a, there's one of our guys coming in. This will be interesting. If we can look at Hoyer making his stop. Maybe we can pick up uh, Evan Emre right now. He's the leader of all the cars who've pitted, and he had a legitimate pit stop of 4.2. So we'll see how we're oh, we're looking. Oh, look at this. Usher has made the pass, he has got around to catch. We knew that was coming, and we're going to look at this one on the replays. This is probably more significant. Usher just gets a strong run out of the last chicane out of Jackie Essex right there, and he's going to get under him, and right there in the chicane takes it over. 
so I can report that Hoyer came in and out. Now, Hoyer's stop was 10.6 seconds, but he was still able to get out in front of Evan Emery to lead all the cars who have pitted. Right now, that interval back to Hoyer is about, oh my goodness, about 58 seconds from Thompson to Hoyer. Of course, Thompson still needs to pit, as do the rest of the 17 cars that are in front of Hoyer. Boy, Josh Thompson, the uh, newly minted Radicals Online driver, is uh, having quite a run here to get things started today, Soup. Some of the leaders working around Scott Newton, who is working to get out of the way. McLeod and, and uh, comes in for his pit. And does Alexander Valdo. They make their stops. Kessler in as well. Boy, Sean, I'm looking at the pit stop times for all the guys who've stopped. Almost all of them have, have been over, yeah. over time. The only one that had yeah. a, a clean one was, was Evan Emery. Everybody yeah, else had some damage. Ty McLeod's in the pit right now. He has major uh, wing damage on his machine. He'll be in for a little bit longer. Kessler is in. A lot of stops getting done a little bit early here today, Sue. But again, I think that has more more yeah. to do with the damage that they've taken than anything. And we report that both of those cars are having long stops. McLeod's was, tw was 12. Kessler's was well going on 20. Yeah, and that that's going to be more than just uh, wing changes on those cars that are in there for well over 20 seconds. All right. Tim Birdie's in. Tim Birdie from second. Now, this is a chance for, for, for Usher to go out there, put in a hot lap, and see if he can catch him. I think Birdie's stop should be relatively fast, as I don't believe he had any damage unless he's gone over a curb that we haven't caught. Looking at Mark Usher right now in that beautiful blue machine privateer driver still looking to pick up a win this season you know that's a quick stop for birdie you sure know every was. time you, every time you say privateer i i think pirateer yeah. um i imagine him driving in the yeah i imagine him in the cockpit driving with his eye patch on and you know sword off to the side there <laughs> All of this action going on behind Josh Thompson, who has a 5.2 second lead. Honestly, unless he runs into some trouble, unless he's picked up some car damage that he's going to have to pay for in a pit stop, he's sitting in pretty good shape right now. That's definitely possible, Soup. Again, this this is a punishing circuit. One mistake, and that, uh, that sends him back into the traffic with everybody else. Trying to search through my statistics to see if Thompson has a win this season. There's been so many people who have one. And I don't see him with one, so that would be another first-time winner. Jeroen de Quartel's in. And here comes Bruno Dometer coming in. Dometer makes that stop, having a good run, and I can confirm that Thompson would be looking to pick up his first win this season. Sean, my goodness, we've had 12 events, right? Because there's six races, two events per, per, per event, or two races per event, so 12 races, 11 different winners. My gosh. And Thompson looks yeah. to be number two, number 12. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been pretty active uh, and pretty sorted this season, Soup, for sure. Okay. Birdie, Birdie has come up. We should report that he cycled out into 10th position. Ahead of De Cortel. Now, we saw De Cortel come in. Cortel's going to be second in line of the guys who've pitted. Manuel Hoyer bringing his car down into the pit lane. The interval from Thompson to Birdie, 42 seconds. Hoyer coming in for a second stop. Oh, yep. boy. Yeah. Must have picked up some more damage somewhere, Soup, that we missed. So that's uh, pretty much going to take him out of any points he can get. And probably any chance of, of finishing on the lead lap. So, man, that's, a, that's really painful. Yep, it sure is, buddy. 
Josh Thompson continuing to uh, put in some really hard fast laps here, though. Last time by, though, Mark Usher was a little bit quicker, but the, the gap still remains five seconds. I think the real interesting is going to be when Usher comes in. I think Thompson should be able to get in and out pretty cleanly. We'll see if Mark Usher can get out ahead of Tim Birdie. Tim Birdie leading the cars who pitted out there right now, racing in 10th. Nobody in front of him. He's got clear air, so he can put in some good lap times. Sean, 22 cars still on the lead lap. The guys who've been able to come in and get their pit stops made. And that'll probably pick up a little bit more as, oh my goodness, Phil Reed has yeah. had issues. Look at Phil Reed. The car just gets, a, gets out from under him. I do not believe he lost a position for this one. This is just a quick little mistake. Trouble navigating another chicane there. there. I can I can tell you to a man, I, I don't think I heard any driver uh, in the league in yesterday's practice session or the pre-race practice that just had a glowing review yeah. of their time here at Solder. <laughs> it's just not fun to race here. It's kind of like kind of like dancing with an awkward woman is this you can never get your rhythm and basically you just want to sit back down and have a drink well soup i think anytime you have to use the word prostate as an analogy for anything <laughs> you're probably not talking about something very fun uh, so yeah but hey listen it's a beautiful track to look at so we want to definitely give our belgian friends a lot of love for that it is pretty Waiting for the top 10 drivers to come in. Tim Birdie, still the leader of all the cars who've had pitted. Josh Thompson, the overall leader. And I think he's going to be able to get that stop made pretty quickly without a problem. Mark Usher has been able to distance himself from to catch. Phil Reed racing in fourth. Lubomir Morris. Boy, I like this driver, Sean, racing in fifth position. He's a good interview, uh, a rookie, and he's been very impressive. Seems to race very cleanly. To catch us in, Sue. All right, That's here we go. Our top three coming in. Birdie right now just working through seven. He's on his way to eight. Remember, Birdie is the leader of all the cars who've pitted. To catch was racing third. Birdie pitted ahead of Tkach when they came in. My goodness, Sean. Christian still hasn't even got to his box. Now he's finally in his box. It's a long way down that pit lane, Sue. Birdie going through that final chicane. That is pit entrance. Now heading, now heading down the straight. To catch is rolling. Now even pit exit takes you on like a trip through through Belgium before you actually it get does. to race again here. To catch is out. Now, did he get out ahead of Birdie? I guess he did easily. Yeah, look at that. I'm 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 surprised that 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 uh, was so. He's so far out in front of Birdie. There's their pit stop times were were relatively the same. Unless I have can't read my my writing, but Birdie was racing ahead of to catch. Boy, our, our leader, Josh Thompson, had a little bit of trouble passing Alexander Waldo just a moment ago and came on the radio and I guess maybe, uh, well, just kind of asked him to get out of the way. <laughs> okay, so the leaders of all the cars who have pitted now is the Red Devil racing driver of Christian Decatch. He currently races in eighth position. He is ahead of these drivers, Miguel Antolin, Sudden Strike to Right. They both need to make a stop. The other seven cars in front of them all need to make a stop as well. The big names, Josh Thompson, Mark Usher, Phil Reed. 13 minutes to go, Sean, it, it's, uh, it's, I know they race for a while, the pit window is big, but I think we are about at the end of it. Yeah, it's getting close here, Soup. definitely getting close. I, I'm estimating we only got about 10 laps left to go. Lee Robinson has had another off. Yeah, you know, it's, Boy, it's not been the greatest day. It's uh, Turleman there. He has trouble. Misses his entry and, and locks up the brakes going in. Yeah, he did. That's exactly. Missed the entry. Was Could not get the car down to the apex and, and just had to woe it up. 
Okay, here comes Josh Thompson heading towards pit entrance. Let's see if he bites this time. I think it's going to be yes. And the answer is, let's make the commentator look smart as he comes in, <laughs> as does Mark Usher. So now while these guys come in, what's going to be interesting, we'll want to see where to catch is. So we just had a big pass for position back here. Drew into a Quartel gets around Tim Birdie. Both of those cars have had their pit stops in. That uh, that gets to Quartel up into 10th. Yeah, I don't like what's going on with Birdie. He should be farther up than he is. Something must be going he on. He should. Like Something, lap time. Yeah. Something's amiss there. I don't, I don't see any physical damage on the car. Usher just hitting his box right now. And my goodness, to catch is is going to get him, I think. To catch is, well, he's a ways back. He's just crossing start-finish line. This could be interesting because pit exit, like I said, meanders before you actually get out onto the track. Usher now has finally found his way back to the track. And to catch can see him. Usher's out in front. And, of course, all this going behind Josh Thompson, who is well out as well. Our new leader, though, how about we get a little love to Phil Reed? He's decided to run that tank as dry as a syrup bottle after a, well, we're in Belgium, a, a, a waffle social. Yeah. Just trying to think of famous Belgian foods and, and uh, why waffle didn't come up first. Yeah. I had no idea, Sue. All right. I was thinking beer. That'll uh, work. The first thing that came to mind. Because beer is a food soup. Remember that. Um, that's, <laughs> that's what I say every time I have it at 9 in the morning. All right. Reed has made his stop. Leaving only Martinson and Larkamp and DeWright to come in. We expect Reed to file out somewhere in fourth. Look for him to come out maybe just ahead of De Cortel. Reed is in. That's going to put Thompson right back to the lead. He gets by quick. Usher's going to come screaming through here. The real interesting one we'll see if uh, I think we're looking at Morris. If Morris can get out before before uh, Reed, I think Reed's going to get out first. Yeah, Reed comfortably out on the track, and so did Birdie. So Reed comes out in fourth. Birdie, for whatever reason, has fallen down to six as he's fallen behind Dick Cortell. You you documented that. Yeah. Now, De Cortel, though, uh, you know, Phil came right out in front of De Cortel. Right, and, and they've been battling all race. Yeah, they have. So uh, maybe a chance for De Cortel to kind of get back into this thing a bit. I yeah. mean, Reed's, Reed had that one spin, so he's certainly not uh, infallible. And Soup, I can't confirm the whole field has taken their pit stops here now with nine and a half minutes left to go. And we'll give you a rundown here in just a minute. A little safer, we let the leaders get around here. This uh, start-finish line Make sure all of our timing and scoring is agreeing with all our other timing and scoring. Right now, I can report that Josh Thompson is, well, he was about five seconds ahead. Now he's only four points second ahead of Mark Usher. Probably with only nine minutes of racing to go, Usher probably will have a tall order to get to the lead. Usher sitting in second. About three seconds ahead of Christian to catch. Then we talked about Reed and uh, De Cortel. They're about 12 seconds behind to catch. Reed, only about a second, Sean, ahead of De Cortel. Who's going on behind those guys? Well, it's uh, Birdie, Lubomir Moritz. But uh, Birdie, honestly, right now, again, something just seems to be off there with that car. I don't know what it is, but uh, um, he is losing ground to Lubomir Moritz right now, who is... Ooh, he's about a second and a half faster, so it's not really a question of yeah. if, but when. Uh, it's only about just over two seconds. They come down the straight here and uh, head into the Klein chicane. And again, Morris seems to be uh, primed to take over that spot there in sixth. And we're hearing De Cortel is somebody we want to look at. Oh, oh, look at this. Look, there's our battle going on. This is De Cortel and Reed. 
did not take long for Reed to, to uh, get ran down by DeCortel. And they go side by side through the corners now. Now they head down the straight. And it looks like DeCortel is going to get that spot. Move him up to fourth. Phil Reed drops back into fifth. Soup, I am watching a really another good battle. Uh, Adam Tierney and Ty McLeod slugging it out right now. A couple of UK. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That one's not decided. Let's stay on it. My bad, guys. And right now, look at this. Now we have Reed back out in front. So we ride on board with Dick Mortel. This has been going on since the very beginning. Two evenly matched cars. Seven minutes of racing to go. What's that going to be? About four lapses, roughly. Just to follow up on Tim Birdie, while we stay on this battle, I just was looking at some lap times. Yeah, Birdie is about two seconds off from his, his fastest lap, so he must have picked up some damage. As this is our best battle on the track. Let's go back and look at eighth position. This is uh, Bruno yeah. Dominer. This is a little hotter. Hey, the orange Viking, Kmart himself, Knut Martinson, running in ninth. Yeah, uh, Knut trying to track him down here. Boy, a nice trip through there for Lumer Morris. I'll say it again. This guy is anything but a rookie driver's suit. He's got you know, chops. And you know what? We're going to cut away from this one. We're going to go to six because Birdie is now under attack from Luba McMorris. This is ahead of those guys, and I think this is going to be done right here. Watch the straight line speed here, I think, from that Morris is going to have down the straightaway. And he's going to gobble him up, and that's an indication of a car that's not healthy. You know, Soup, our spotter, uh, Billy Bob Wright, says there's some splitter damage on uh, Birdie's machine there. That's probably what's been slowing him down and sending him backwards. Yeah, it's about two seconds a lap now, so he continues to fall. We noticed that must have happened right before his pit stop because when he came in for that stop uh, to catch, was able to jump him. We knew something was up then. Five and a half minutes of racing. Josh Thompson still out in front. Let's go back in and check on Domiter and Martinson. Oh, it looks like Domiter be able to distance himself now. In fact, Canute start maybe turning his attention from in front to behind because here comes Jury Morjack. Dometer in eighth, Martinson in ninth, Morjack in tenth. A pair of rookies bookending the veteran of Knut Martinson. Five minutes to go, Soup. It's all or nothing now, buddy. I guarantee you this battle up here for fourth is not over. Jeroen de Cortel really hanging in there nope. with Phil Reed. We're looking at here they are coming at you. That's Reed. We're right on the back now off the uh, off the gearbox of Phil Reed looking back at de Cortel. Points paid down to 20. We have 21 drivers on the lead lap. Last one being Casper Thon. He's going to be hard pressed to stay in front of Josh Thompson. We'll document that in a minute as we stay on this battle. Love that shot. Now we go to the front, looking up ahead. Thompson ushered to catch your podium racers right now. Super. I'm I'm not so sure that the uh, the battle is over here back for ninth either. Uh, Moshak continues to press Martinson. A, a mistake so easy to make here in the chicanes. He just got through Turtleman without incident. But again, Martinson got to be very very careful here to guard against him. Any type of mistake, it will definitely open the door for Moshak. Yeah, Mojack is coming. Remember, we were looking at that. We thought that maybe Martinson might have a shot to get Dominer. Yeah, that's a look at look at this now. Jerry looking for any way around. 
You know, and right behind them, Emre and Larkamp are having a spirited battle, too. Yeah, that's a... There's the pass made, you can see. But nah, Mojek's not going to get that one. So let's jump back to the one back in 11th there, because that's heating up. That's Evan Emre. And knock, knock, knocking on Evan's door is Stefan Larkamp. No. I'm not going to be able to get that one out of my head. Thank you, Bob Dylan. Right, Dylan, right? That is Dylan. Okay, don't give me the Guns N' Roses answer, because nope, then I'll... Nope. I want to hear that. Two minutes of racing to go, and our leader has just crossed the start-finish line. I think we got this and one more lap for him. The bad news for Casper Thon is he has been lapped, so he will not get the pole position. That's going to put... Oh, my goodness. You want to talk wire to wire? How about let's put <laughs> Enric Andre on the pole for the sprint mm, race? Boy, oh, boy. Yeah. I don't like that for the rest of the field. <laughs> I don't either. Man, De Cortel is still digging for this spot, man. He just made a little bit of a mistake there coming out of Jackie Essex. said that the final chicane and it didn't set up well for a run down the straight. He's starting to lose Phil just a little bit as they get through turn two. Head through Canal blocked here. Into Bianchi. Out of Bianchi. And I'll tell you what, Jeroen just not able to pick it up there. Boy, we have battles that are just real close to getting this one for fifth. De Cortel just can't get through there. Back to 11th position. Emery and Larkamp. Larkamp just can't seem to get there either. Soup, by the way, you're winning the commentators battle this evening, okay? okay. That's, what talk, that's what they're talking about I on the YouTube channel after one. that after that last one there. Okay. Boy, Larkamp really, really picking up him right here. Soup, would it be unfair for me to say that there hasn't really been as much passing as as it appears there has been because it seems like some of these guys have been trying to pull off yeah. uh, these passes for what half a dozen laps now. Be interesting to know. I mean, maybe Sean, I know you probably did a lot of solo racing. I wonder if like there's a push here because they can get close. Look at this battle. Here he comes. This is probably the best one out there. He's closer than he's been before. This is my goodness. He's right on him now. We're looking to read out in front. De Cortel, we are on, I believe, the white flag lap right now. Now they head down into the first chicane again, though. De Cortel, about six car lanes back, too far back to do anything. Boy, and, and Thompson really, really having trouble getting around Andrew Andre. Andre did not want to give up that spot. That is a huge pass. That has only in here we go this is really important and very important for thompson as well if he can get this pass made has huge ramifications but i don't think so give the race win to josh thompson wow. eric andre able to hang on let's go back to phil reed thompson reed. wasn't very happy about the fight either oh well there's there's some there's some reason there meanwhile Reed working his way through the final chicane. Let's see if De Cortel has anything for him. I don't think so. Reed's going to end up slotted into fourth. Fifth place goes to De Cortel. Usher to catch get second and third. Only in the AOR feature race would that battle for the lead lap between Enric Andre and Josh Thompson have any significance at all. And what that is, that's the difference of Enric Andre getting to start on the pole or having to start in 20th position yeah. for the sprint race. I mean, based on the format, Soup, I can't say I blame yeah. Andre too much for, but do you, do you fight hard enough to cost the guy from winning the race? I don't know. It's just, it, it's a delicate balance. But again, I think the format that we're yeah. dealing with here lends more to what was going on on track than anything. Well, just to follow that before we go to breaks, this looks like all the other battles are done. We can report that, uh, that Martinson got the best of Mojack. And we can finish up on the battle. We looked at the battle for 11th. 
Emre got the best of Larkamp. Just to follow up on your point, there are specific rules in this series that are different from normal blue flag rules. They say you're supposed to get out of the way, but my goodness, with the leader with a with a two second lead and and me having a chance for pull, I, I'm I'm gonna ride here with Andre on this one. But what is, what is really important to know is that, and I tell about this every week, that the best part of any double feature event is the uh, is the the gap in between the first event and the second event. It's that perfect blend of the post-race high and the pre-race jitters. What I'm going to do right now is take a short break, but we'll be back to run down the entire finishing order of the feature race, talk to some of the drivers, and then get our ducks in a row for the sprint race that'll follow. Back in a few. Show you this replay immediately because this is important. Welcome back. We talked about Enric Andre finishing last on the lead lap. Watch what happens here. Now he is behind Josh Thompson. As they come across the line, he finishes ahead of Thompson. Thompson's race is over. Andre still has to finish his race. Thompson comes out in front. He's now on his cool down lap. Thompson is going slow, but he's on the racing line. Enric Andre comes in, makes contact with the winner. Remember, Thompson's race is over. Andre drives on, but no, he has hit his incident cap. He blinks away, which means he cannot finish his lap, which means he doesn't finish on the lead lap, which means he doesn't get to start on pole. Only in the AOR, Sean. Oh, boy. And you know what, Soup? There's going to be a little bit of controversy after this one. I understand. I will tell you that, that the AOR does, in fact, have a rule, okay? And I'm going to quote it to you here. Okay. That once the leader is within... 0.5 seconds of it, you have to let them go. So, I mean, Andre had okay. had a bit of an obligation there to let Josh get through cleanly. And then they need another rule, though, now. Well, what happens yeah. when, when the leader crosses the line and, and passes the guy who's trying to finish his lead his last lap and the leader is on the cool-down lap? I have never seen that before, where the Boy. guy on the cool-down lap gets in a collision with a guy trying to finish on the lead lap. And it really wouldn't matter in any other event. It wouldn't matter because Andre would have finished 20th 
on the lead lap or 20th, one lap down. It wouldn't matter anywhere except for here where it's important to finish on the lead lap. Let's run down your entire finishing order yeah, of the 19 None of that was cars. confusing enough. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Josh Thompson, Mark Usher, and Christian to catch go one, two, three. Pretty much Thompson was wire to wire. He lost a couple laps to Phil Reed, who stayed out a little bit. Usher got around to catch as he picked up two spots when he started fourth. Phil Reed, De Cortel, they battled the entire race. Reed, Cortel, Cortel, Reed, who was ever out in front? Well, the finish up Reed and De Cortel. Uh, this new rookie that we're keeping an eye on, Ludemir Morris, another great race for him as he comes home in sixth. Tim Birdie picked up that damage. He qualified second, has to limp the car home in seventh. The Orange Viking, Knut Martinson, nice job as he is our top. Well, I apologize. Nick Cortell is a Tier 2 driver as well. So Martinson finished second for Tier 2 drivers. Yuri Morik, Morjak in ninth. And boy, Sean, I took a lot of time on the top 10, but it was exciting. Bruno Dominer, who do you got after that? Okay, buddy. And it's going to be Evan Nimre. He'll finish 11th. Steven Larkamp will finish 12th, 13th, going to go to Lawrence DeReich, 14th, Adam Tierney, tough day for him. Miguel Antolin will finish 15th, 16th, going to go to Ty McLeod, 17th, Lee Robinson, Alexander Waldo in 18th, 19th, Stefan Harmon, and in 20th, there is. Andre will wind up there. And that 20th, now my timing and scoring says minus one space yes, L, does. meaning one lap down. Well, that changes everything for the Sprint Braves. We'll talk about that in a minute. Casper Thond in 21st position. Patrick Kessler, Scott Newton, Harrison Finch, our only foul here today in 24th. Manuel Hoyer in 25th. Brun, uh, Daniel Barrero. Uh, Daniel, my goodness, that cannot be spelled right. <laughs> There's no... Okay, in, in iRacing, it says B-E-R-R-R-O. That's what I'm looking at, but up there, that's <laughs> Barrero. Okay. I'm telling you, my iRacing timing and scoring has three R's in a row, which would be Daniel Barrero, Alexander Mariloso, Andre uh, Greenball, and Silvio Hurt, 25 laps down. Okay, Sean, do we have anybody who's willing to come in to talk to us? Are they all no. scared that we're going to give them the... <laughs> yes. nobody, really. wants, nobody wants to answer the tough questions today, Sue. So nobody. Well... Let's before we go then let's look at the finishing order and let's go ahead and look for our one of those fast drivers that's down there at the bottom. I got to go past Herman Valdo. I got to go all the way up till I get to the guy in fifth, 14th, Adam Tierney. Yeah, yeah, Tierney's there. Um boy, uh you know, don't count out Evan Emre either. It looks like uh, uh Moshak who's been really really Right fast uh, ever since he showed up here soup he's going to be in the middle of all that you got canute martinson's going to be in the middle of that field as well so um it's it's going to be fun the the start of this race is going to be fun and uh that first trip down into uh, turn one erst is uh uh is going to be a, a very contested battle and uh, uh once they make it to the first chicane things might start to spread out uh, but as you saw here, there's not a lot of room in the chicane soup to make any passes. And we mentioned it in the countdown to green that it was in season four where Hugo Pareto did the rare double. So it is possible for Josh Thompson to get all the way through. And what's really going to help any chance of that double for Josh Thompson is that Enric Andre is not going to be on the pole. Having, having Andre sitting uh, on the pole would have been, well... We talked about a wire to wire. Uh, Andre's so fast. Uh, we that would have been tough to deal with. Okay, there you have it. I guess nobody's going to come in to talk with us, so that'll give our director a little more time to get all of his ducks lined up just perfectly, so we can bring you now what's going to happen. We're going to step away for a minute. We're going to bring you the 25 minute sprint. Sean's going to talk about it a little bit more when we come back. But here's the deal: invert the lead lap cars. 25 laps, no pit stops. Don't want to miss it. Back in a few.
Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Championship Round 7 from Circuit Zolder. All right, we've ran down the finishing order of a great sprint race that was not without its controversy. Let's go to something that's a little more straightforward. As Sean's going to talk to you about the sprint race details. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about the controversy. Maybe we'll get back to that. Yeah, now. we'll get back it's, to that. The sprint race soup, 25 minutes. That one, uh, the, the feature race blew by so quickly, I'm kind of scared. I will probably, don't blink, folks, on this next one. Now that we are inverting the grid based on everybody on the lead lap there uh, last time around. So uh, uh, in that feature race, so uh, as we talked about at the end of the feature race, there'll be some interesting things going on there. You will get one fast repair if you need it. I don't know if that's really going to make a difference. It may keep you in a points position, uh, maybe. Uh, but if you got to go into the pit in this sprint race, yeah, your chances of winning and or getting points is probably dashed. And the incident cap 12X, now we did see, um, well, and Eric Andre there fall into the twilight zone at the very end of the race. Um, so uh, everybody's going to have to be a little bit careful here with only 12 incidents allowed. And the points are about there. They're worth about two third uh, of the points that they give out in the feature race. So a little bit reduced, but uh, this hey, make no mistake. This is still in a very exciting race. And and there is still a lot at stake soup here in these sprint races. OK, let's talk a little bit more about what happened at the end, because the more I thought about it, it really took a perfect storm of three events for this to happen. First of all, you had to have a you had to have Enric Andre to be close enough where he was supposed to legitimately give up that last lap position to the leader Josh Thompson. That's event number one. Event number two, Josh Thompson had to be able to pass Andre after they crossed the start finish line. So really, Thompson is on a slow down lap, slow down lap, shouldn't be passing any cars, but he passed Andre. That's the second part. But what really made it, the, the factor that really made the whole thing significant is that Enric Andre had to be really close to his incident cap. I mean, if, if it was just a normal contact, Andre could have just finished his lead lap or finished his lap and it would have all been forgotten. But the fact that he blinked away to go visit Rod Serling in the Twilight Zone, Sean, it was like all those things had to take place for that to have any significance. It, an amazing yeah. end to that race. I saw so many things unfold there in just the, the last uh, minute, basically. Um and a very, very strange ending there uh, for Eric <laughs> Andre. And, and listen, this controversy has not gone away. I mean, they are still debating it in the uh, in the YouTube chat. Um, feel free to pile on, folks. Uh, just uh, uh, just keep it clean, okay? That's all we ask. Keep it clean. <laughs> well, here's the deal. If you're on, if you're the winner and you're on the slowdown lap, you shouldn't be passing cars that are still racing. That's that's one. Yeah. But, yeah. but if you are in, according to these rules, if you are the last car on the lead lap within half a second, you're supposed to give up that position. And Thompson wanted, Thompson did not want to have to chase down uh, Enric Andre. I, 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 that's I talked. To, that's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Andre's trying to stay on the lead lap, and I understand the rule yep. in principle, but maybe that rule shouldn't be applied yeah, to I, if you're trying to stay on the lead lap. I don't know, Soup. I don't know the answer to that one. I really don't. I love it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm just glad I get to broadcast these things, and I don't have to make any decisions or any martial calls or uh, even more so here today at Circus Older have to drive. Uh, leave that to the experts out here today. And at this, just one more point as I play attorney for Josh Thompson here. He had no idea that Enric Andre is close to his incident cap. I mean, it could have just been a little love tap, say, hey, he didn't maybe think that it was going to blink him away into, into you know, la-la land. So anyway, we'll put that behind us as we have 45 seconds of practice. No qualifying here, remember, as the grid is inverted from what we saw. 19 cars on the lead lap. Woo! Josh Thompson, Sean, clearly the the class of the field, though. Don't know if he has enough to do the double that we saw Prado do last time we were here, but it'd be fun to watch. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, listen, the the double is uh, it's it's a special trophy to get, isn't it, Soup? I mean, it it yeah. takes an incredible amount of work. I don't know if that's going to be possible here at Zolder. This this track is just too demanding. 
Um, I, I just I can't see that happening today. It's going to be awful tough. I think if you if if you pull the double off here at Zolder today, I think you deserve a really special medal. In American sports, would be like hitting for the cycle in baseball. Probably, if we go hockey or soccer for the international audience, maybe maybe like a hat trick, hat trick in soccer. If the, if there is yeah. such a thing, that's kind of yeah. no. Of you can get that. You can get the hat trick in soccer too. I, uh, but uh, you be, you're lucky to score yeah. three goals in yeah. soccer. So here we go with the grid. Let's do it. Now look at this. Enric Andre has been put back on the pole. Mm. Seth wow. Herman and outside of him, Alexander Valda, Lee Robinson, Ty McLeod, Miguel Antolin, Adam Tierney, Lawrence Sudden strike to right, ninth and tenth, Stefan Larkamp, and Evan Emre. Go ahead, Sean. Eleventh? Oh, okay. And eleventh is going to be Bruno Dometer. Yuri Mojak there in twelfth. Knut Martins in thirteenth. Fourteenth going to go to Tim Bertie. Lubomir Morris in fifteenth. Sixteenth. Jerome De Cortel. Seventeenth. Phil Reed. Christian Tukach in eighteenth. Nineteenth. Mark Usher and twentieth. Josh Thompson. Blackjack. Casper Thon. Patrick Kessler. Scott Newton. Harrison Finch. Manuel Hoyer. Alexis Merloso. Andre Grenball and Silvio Hurt round out your twenty-eight car field. So the benevolent and all-powerful series officials have decided to find justice and put Enric Andre back on the pole. That changes everything. Look for that French driver to go wire to wire. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows because the horses are out of the barn. And Enric Andre leads the stampede down into the first left-hand sweeper. That is corner number one. Second position, Herman. Third position, Baldo Robinson, who had a great race in the feature running in fourth. Look at him bunched up for fifth. That's McLeod working on the outside. Is your points leader, Adam Tierney, in sixth. Boy, and several cars got off at the back of the field. Scott Newton, Stephen Larkamp uh, off into the dirt soup. Kessler has had issues, but so far most of the cars make it. Looks like Newton has had some issues as well. The field goes down into the chicane for the first time. They bunch up, but they're all getting through. They are a soup. Even at the back of the field, they managed to get through that chicane. Whoops. So here's some more contact as as Newton has had, Newton has had a spot with Larkamp. They got together. Yep, the right has did. had an issue. Now, what DeRyke was running well, he was running in about 8th position right now. He's fallen back to 17th with his problems. Up front, it is still Enric Andre saying thank you very much. Feeling that justice was served as he's out in front. Stefan Herman in second. Alexander Valdo in third. Josh Thompson is furious with somebody being out of control. And sure enough, Thompson has made contact. And I think it was with Manuel Hoyer. Well, if I don't want to get this one wrong. Did I misidentify? He made contact with... I think he made contact with Dometer, maybe. Oh, Bruno Dometer, yes. Apologies to Hoyer. I don't know what Hoyer was just kind of slow coming off the chicane. That's Dometer up in front, and he's just slow, and, and Thompson... I guess he didn't go. Josh Thompson saying, let me go on the straight. Well, you're raising for position. And Tim Birdie comes over and says, boys, save that debate for a later time. Uh, I don't know. That's close. I don't know if I'm going to blame Dometer too much no. right there, but... Uh... Um, that's unfortunate uh, there for Thompson. He's already taken the car off the track. Yeah, that's the nature of the beast of being a fast driver put back in there. How about a quick look at third position? This is Alexander Valdo being challenged by Ty McLeod. Oh my goodness, they are way too close. No need to be that close, Ty, but it matches his works. Ty really confident with his internet connection. That ghost contact, Netco didn't cause a problem. Valdo now has a horrible exit out of that final chicane. That's going to put him into the grabs. They're coming off both sides. Lee Robinson on one side, Valdo trying to at least protect part of it. He's going to be able to hold off both Robinson and Tierney. Well, for now. Then he goes a little bit wide, and it looks like as they go too wide again on the outside, that's Robinson going to get that spot. Point leader Tierney in six, just biding his time. We ride on board with Baldo. 
And Soup, real quickly, Dominator had to peel off and get into the pit. Scott Newton also in there. Battle for the lead, though. Andre's oh, my off. goodness. Andre's off. He was taking the defensive line in sight of Herman, and then the car got loose through the chicane. He didn't hit anything. Tim Birdie. Birdie fighting with Alexander Waldo. We're going to check the replay here, though, on what happened. Right on board with our leader, now racing in 20th position. Don't be fooled by that timing and scoring. Yeah, you know what, Soup? I think he might have clipped one of those sausage bombs I talked about earlier. Kind of got the car offline and causes him to spin. Andre had to let a lot of cars get through there. He's cycling all the way back to 20th place now. Soup, i got to look at this gaggle of cars, though, behind Tim Birdie, Lee Robinson, Alexander Waldo, and, and Phil Reed and Miguel Antolin fighting right there as they all come down the front stretch. Jeroen de Cortel just behind him. Phil Reed making a, a very bold move there into turn one. Oh, getting way loose. Baldo squiggles up in front. That's going to let this whole train go by. There goes Reed. Here comes Antolin if he wants it. Baldo stuck on the outside. He's going to lose that position. And I think he's going to lose some to Martinson as well. We can report that Enric Andre has taken it into the pits, but Sean, oh, I do not want to be Alexander Baldo right now as he almost makes contact. Oh, now he gets a little bit loose. He's going to lose a position. And there's more madness right behind him there. Yeah. Soup. You got Lubomir Morris and and uh, Evan Emery, Knut Martinson fighting. This is just a crazy, yeah. crazy battle. Oh, oh he and spins. Baldo, he spins. Baldo off. spins. That's probably the best thing that could have happened to him because the. <laughs> The horde of bees were coming. He was about to get stung. Emery out in front of Martinson right now. Morris and oh. to catch back there as well. So then he opts to just take the toe and go in. Wow. Okay, let's go back live. And how about a little love for one of our Steffens? The Battle of the Steffens, not so <laughs> close right now as Larkamp is racing way back in 22nd position. So the one we'll put our attention on is Herman up in front with about a two-second lead over Ty McLeod. Now, my, Lubomir, go ahead, Sean. Lubomir Morris just pulls off another pass, gets around to catch, and uh, Lawrence DeReich. DeReich struggling right now. He's he's being overtaken here by catch. I think to catch is going to hold on to it. Gets a better run out of the turn. Such great battling way far back in the back. And it's boy, Andrew Green uh Greenhog up 14 spots already. That rookie having a really, really good drive. He's just got by uh just got by Lawrence DeReich there. I wonder if DeReich has some damage. I don't see any damage on the car. Oh boy, big trouble for DeCortel. See what happened to Yeroon here. Oh, well, oh, he makes he gets in behind Lee Robinson there, and he just he makes an evasive move to try to avoid running him over. And when he does, it spins the car. Yeah, well, I told you to hang on. This was going to be busy. Yeah. It's all happened in the back. Now, let me this upgrade you. I know the action is great down there, but I got to give you the storyline up front. Stefan Herman still out of front, but he's losing time to Ty McLeod. McLeod's knocked off about three tenths of a second since we last checked in. Don't forget about Adam Tierney. Tierney started in seventh. Remember, he's your overall points leader. He now races in third. He's about one and a half seconds behind McLeod, still with a chance to get the win. Tim Birdie's been fast all day. He races in fourth all by himself. And Phil Reed rounds out your top five. Reed able to get away from uh, Miguel Antolin. Lee Robinson just overtaken by Knut Martinson. Yeah. We've and got to stay Morris, here. Morris now trying to overtake Robinson. Look Heading Morris, to the chicane the here. Man, he is fun oh. to watch. Yeah, Morris had to lock him up there going into the chicane. Able to hang on to it, keep it from spinning. Lee Robinson working with some wing damage on that car, though, right now. And that's probably what's got him off. 
Yeah, I would usually catch. say he would be a victim to, to catch, but again, I'm not sh sure how healthy to catch his car is. Great four car battle for eighth. Martinson, Morris, Robinson, and to catch. Sean, every once in a while we find a driver that just kind of catches our eye, and uh, Lubomir Morris is, is one of those guys. Not the speed yet to race up front with the big boys, but uh, some good racecraft for him. Hey, the dude's fast. Uh, yeah. We've seen it every week here so far. He hasn't had the best luck in the world, but he's been good. Oh, look at this line now that Martins is going to take. going to take his half out of the middle. He's going to stay as wide. That, boy, that forces Morris. He had to either make up a decide to go really wide or really tight. They can't get it done through one. Let's stay on this a bit here. We'll follow it through two, three, and four. I would think that Morris will probably make his attack into that first chicane. I can report right. up front, the lead is now two seconds. So we're not missing anything up there. Here we go, down to the chicane. He's just not, I don't think he's close enough to get the toe here really, Soup. Not enough speed here going down into the first, uh, into the chicane. He's not gonna get him there. Oh boy, he really got high up on the curb there though. Yeah. Gotta, be careful. Gotta be careful there, Lumir. And that cost him a lot of time as that brought in the former champion, the Red Devil Racer, Christian to catch right behind him. Great battle for eighth. Falling off a bit is the rookie, Andrew Greenball. He's back there in ninth position or 11th position. Let's drop back real quick to DeRyke in 12th. He's being challenged by De Cortel. No, not going to happen yet. Sorry to jump all around, but there's action everywhere yeah, for you. It, there really is, Sue. Silvio, Silvio hurt, hurt with trouble. Yeah. All by himself. It's going to be too much curb for Silvio, unfortunately. Right in front of Casper Thrawn. Thrawn gets around. Oh, let's go to Martinson real quick if we can. I hate to do it to you. Oh, it's not going to happen. Well, that's okay. Morris made an attack on him. Couldn't get it done. Yeah, you get the feeling to catch is back here for cleanup uh -huh. duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got, his, he's got his mop and his mop bucket, and, and he's ready to go. <laughs> well, Martinson and Morris race for that eighth spot. We ride on board with to catch. Up front, we don't need to go there. One and a half seconds is Herman over McLeod. We will keep an eye on McLeod, though, as uh, Tierney beginning to run him down. He's only about seven-tenths of a second back. But this is really where the action is. Stefan Herman saying, watching this broadcast back on replay, saying, a lot of front, how about some love, guys? I'll get to you, Stefan, I promise. Martinson getting overtaken here by Morris. This is, I think it's finally going to happen. Morris finally clears him. Got him. Bring it. Our leader, as that's going on, our leader has had trouble. As we're looking at this one, our director found it. I have not. I'm going to watch it with you for the first time with you. Just a self mistake, Sean. Oh, yeah. step on. All right, he's still in third, though. We got to go back live, though, because now to catch, trying to take this position away from Morris as they battle in Erst. Now it's Knut Martinson back there doing cleanup duty. They continue to battle up just in front of him to catch on the outside. Lubomir trying to hang on to it here. He'll have the preferred position through four, which should, oh, but he has to back out a little bit. Now the momentum from Takech should give him the advantage all the way down the straight. And look at that behind him. Here comes the cars because of that bad exit. That's Martinson being overtaken now. Let's move. Greenball is back into the mix. Greenhall back in there. Andrew Greenhall racing in yeah. 10th position. Oh! Yuri Morjik racing in. I guess he was back last in the car. I thought he was farther up. He just had a big spin. We don't need to go to it, but Morjik is gone. DeRyke gets around gets around uh, Martinson. So DeRyke up to 10th. Martinson falling back to 11th. Up front, your new leader is now Ty McLeod. He's got 7 tenths of a second on the points leader, Adam Tierney. Tyranny hoping to pick up his second win of the season. 
this has just been absolutely unhinged uh, from the drop of the green flag suit. We look at Tierney racing a second. You can see on your timing and scoring, Stefan Herman, Sean pointed it out, even though he had that spin. You see him at the back of your screen right there, still racing in third. Trying to make lemonade out of lemons. You know, they call him a director for a reason, Soup. He gives you direction, right? Oh. And and, remi and reminds you to just stop and take a breath every now and then, guys. <laughs> Love it. Sean, we broadcast a lot of events. There is nothing that comes close to broadcasting one of these sprint races. They are so <laughs> fast and they are so full of stuff. Yeah. Well, our, you know what makes it great is that the feature race sets up this sprint uh, race. You know does. what I mean? It just totally sets the tone of how things are going to go. We are well aware about telling stories and, and not jumping all over the place, but these feature races, or sprint races, it's impossible to cover without jumping around. We're looking at De Cortel now in a great battle with Martinson. Martinson dropping like a pigeon, though, was racing as far up as ninth. He's falling well back. Okay, let's let's go to another battle. Miguel Miguel Antolin is now falling into the grip here of Christian to catch. And as sure as I say that, I think Dereik, did Dereik have problems? I missed it. I missed it. Let's look at it here on the replay soup. Oh, and he there just loses go. it coming off the turn there. And now here we have we come back to the spot you were looking at, and that's to catch mm -hmm. on the outside. Oh, our leader has had a spin all by himself. Puts the nose oh. into the into the wall barely. <clears throat> he hits one of those sausage bombs, man. Just clips it with the tire right there. You're gonna you're gonna see it here. He just runs it a little bit too wide, and he clips the that one of those curves, and it sends. The, I think he clipped it with the left rear. Ah, oh, jeez, nothing is safe. Nothing is sacred. <laughs> While leading, Stefan Herman spins. While leading, Ty McLeod spins. Now leading, Adam Tierney. Maybe not He's, a good thing. <laughs> Adam's leading this race too soon. I think you want to yeah. lead it out of the last turn if you want any luck today. Our points leader looking to pick up his second win. He's got 2.6 seconds now back on Stefan Herman. Herman fared a little bit better than McLeod did. McLeod got some damage. McLeod has fallen back to fifth. Yeah, and and the real battle is in the middle in the middle of this uh, this field yeah. right now. You've got to catch, being followed by Lubomir Morris and Miguel Antolin and Andrew uh, Green Greenhog. Who, Greenhog's up seventeen spots. He's having a major run here. Really was not not even a consideration in the sprint races. He started so far back. Morris now able to see if he can run down to catch. Antolin now Antolin was reported by our spotter Billy Bob Wright that he has a little damage. Green Hall, really impressive. Yeah, Rookie driver out of the UK and Ireland. Uh, you know, and I don't know, did we mention the damage on Takech's machine? He's got rear wing damage on his car. That can't be helping at all. I mean, it's it's minor, but it's enough to where it's kind of upset, upset the, uh, the balance on the car a little bit. Only in the sim racing universe does carbon fiber bend, but there you have it. <laughs> It only bends once, Soup, when you heat it up and you shape it, and then after that, you're done once it yeah. cures. Evan Emery runs in sixth. Ty McLeod out of the lead has fallen back to fifth. Phil Reed runs in fourth just to give those guys a little love. Tim Birdie all by himself in the podium position in third. 18 cars on the lead lap. I will tell you this: If iRacing ever implements the damage, uh, the damage model and the tire puncture at the same time, we're going to be in big trouble because carbon fiber and shards of it ah. aren't kind of tires, sir. Looking at the battle for twelfth right now. Sudden strike to right. He leads Martinson. He was able to get that pass made. Martinson trying to get that spot back. Right now, Martinson has to worry about... Now, I reported, unless I was wrong, I thought I reported that... Oh, that's not a battle for position. I thought so. Morjack is, a, is, a, is not on the lead lap as he's chasing Martinson right now. Oh, 
result. Sean, look at this as our rookie has made another yeah. pass. <laughs> another pass, I know. Ah, oh, Lawrence Direct wants that spot back, though. He's fighting him hard for it here. Ooh, and, boy, that was uh, close. Now, that's Antolin being, that's De Cortel, that battle for, for a tenth. But green ball up, green, sorry, green. I'm going to go with green hall up to a ninth position. Yeah, we'll stick with green hall for right now. That, green that, hall. that, that sounds good. <laughs> I'm going to make this, a, if, if there's any friends Ooh. or family or teammates, look at that battle going on there from Antolin. On the inside, oh. do they make contact and Cortel gets in front. Hi, uh, Antolin, he nicked him. Friends and family of Andrew Greenhall, if they want to let him know, come on in and talk to us. We'd like to have him in for the interview here. Drivers always think they need to finish on the podium, come to talk to us. We'll talk to the podiums, but we always like to talk to a stray driver here and there. Give you a saucer of milk, take you in, make you feel comfortable. Looking for... The top, top nine or ten, really not much going on. This is the best one. We look at this one here. This is the right and Martinson. Martinson qualified. Oh no! And there goes sudden strike. Yep, and it, chicane <laughs> loses the thought. To, loses the spot to Thon going to cycle out in 14th. This will be a good shot here from the from Kmart. You, you see him hit that hit that sausage bomb in the chicane oh, there, man. and he's around. You know, I don't have to drive the track, so I can say that I, I that I don't enjoy racing, and I know that much. But honestly, it puts on a pretty good show. And I'm talking about Zolder. Not so much passing, but just uh, as far as mistakes come. We look at Sudden Strike to Reich in 14th position. Honestly, not a real battle now to be found much anywhere. Let's go to P2 because here comes Tim Birdie. I got to give Stefan Herman a tip of the hat. He was leading for a while, had that spin. Just maintained focus, racing in second, but now he's being run down by a faster car, Tim Birdie. Yeah, Birdie has really seemed to have found his pace here. Um, uh, Soup, he is up 11 spots, finds himself in the podium spot. He could get one rung higher on the podium. I'm sure that would be okay with him. Stefan uh, hanging on here at this point. We talked about, as we watched, we talked about Adam Tierney and drop races, maybe throw this one away. Well, maybe we spoke a little too soon as he... He finished in the points in the, in the feature race and now looking to get a sprint race win. Probably not going to throw this one away after all. So another one of the features of the AOR Formula Renault 2.0 Championship. Don't really know how things are going to turn out. So we look at this one now. We'll look at, uh, we're looking at Herman in second as he continues. That's a nice pretty red car that he's racing. We'll stay on this for a minute. We have another battle to talk about, but just got a hunch that Birdie's going to get there faster than we think. Well, he got a hustle, though. Only less than three minutes of racing. Boy, Sean, the time yeah. goes by fast. It, I looked up there to see how much time we have left. I, I had soup. I had the same thing just happen to me a moment ago. I'm like, really? There's two and a half minutes after this race? You got to be kidding. Oh, Miguel Antolin goes off. He's off the track back out of Canal. Antolin now racing in 11th position. Things beginning to settle down now. In fact, most of, surprisingly, most of the battles have, have worked themselves out. They have. Yeah, they really kind of have. I mean, Bertie's still got a good chance right. to catch this Herman is, here. We're not missing anything. This is the best one we're watching right now that um, Jim Yaman, our director, has found for us. The battle for second. This is Herman. Oh, to catch an Emory. To catch out, to catch, gonna get by Emory here. Oh, Chris, 
Christian to catch. Oh. Just yeah, that one. That one uh, was easy pick as there is to catch Musa yeah. up into sixth. Yeah, that was. Let's go back now. We go back live to P two. This is Herman. This looks like we'll see, we've got a minute twenty seven. This might have two more bites out of it. Here he comes. Here comes Birdie. He's going to duck to the inside. He's going to force the issue, and it's over. If he can get a woad up and negotiate the chicane, okay. And he does move Tim Birdie up oh, into south. Greenhall just had trouble trying to get by Jeroen to a quartel. He slides off course. They were in a great battle. Oh. De Quartel left him plenty of room on the he did, outside. Yeah. Greenhall just trying to make the car stick. It didn't stick. He didn't hit anything. He was racing in a he was racing in ninth position. Where did he fall back to? That's probably gonna uh, cost him I, a couple I, spots. So no, one. actually, no, he hangs uh, on to tenth. He's still yeah. still there in tenth. That was his spot. He was able to okay. maintain it. But at the time lost, uh, he'll never get to ninth yeah. here at this point, unfortunately. In fact, now he, now he has to worry about uh, Antolin getting in. There's a spot battle here for 10th with Antolin looking. But I think I like Greenhall probably in pretty good shape. Are we on the white flag lap? I believe so. Right now, our leader has worked his way around three, going through four. It is your points leader. The Formula Mini driver. He's got one win under his belt so far this season. He's going to pick up a second today if he can just negotiate the last half of the track. It is Adam Tierney. He's gone through five. Through Butte. Up to the second chicane. Which has a real name that Sean's going to tell us right now. I'm going to call it Corner 7. <laughs> Turleman. Thank you. <laughs> Heading down into what I like to call corner eight and what Sean likes to call. Bulger Berhagen. <laughs> something like that. Stop it, soup, before you Sorry, hurt guys. your commentator buddy. Coming Sorry into, to all my Belgian friends. <laughs> coming into corner number 10. It is uh, Adam Tierney. He negotiates the left. He negotiates the right. Nothing in front of him and the checkered flag that's waving. Adam Tierney wins. The sprint race round number seven from Zolder. Second place is going to go to Tim Birdie. Herman gets third. Is there a battle out there? Maybe back to Antolin and Greenball? We go back to P12. Ah, oh, this is it. Sudden strike to Reich in a battle with Knut Martinson. Martinson qualified in 13th position. Oh, look at this behind him. This is Howard and, Howard and Thawne. Nice little battle going on back here for 12, 13, 14, and 15. Let's follow these four cars. I think the back two cars might be the fastest. They just might not have enough time, though, as they're coming up to the final chicane. First one through is Sudden Strike to Reich. He's going to negotiate that one okay. Let's score him in 13th. Oh, Hoyer, oh, Hoyer no. makes a big mistake. Big mistake for Hoyer out of Jackie Hitzix right there. That's going to allow Thrawn to get by, and Thrawn go up to 14th. Hoyer gets 15th. We'll see that one on replay. Sean, too much curb? Yep. <laughs> too much curb. We, we saw need, that a lot here in the sprint race today. We need some type of abbreviation for that. We'll just say TMC from now on, okay? Too much curb. That seems to be the story here at Zolder. All right. The racing is over here in Belgium, but our broadcast is far from it. What we're going to do right now is take a short break, but we'll be back to run down the entire finishing order of the sprint race, talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on this place so nobody steals any of the chicanes. Back in a few.
Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Championship Round 7 from Circuit Zolder. Time to run down the finishing order of the 25-minute sprint that just took place. And you'll need to see this order as there was so much action. Even Sean and I aren't sure really what happened. We know that Adam Tierney was your winner as he picks up six spots coming from seventh to get the win. His second win of the season. Tim Birdie had a really good day of racing as he comes home in second. Gotta love Stefan Herman. He led for a while, had a spin that dropped him out of the lead, but nevertheless, he's able to get a podium position. Nice job, Stefan. Phil Reed, a veteran, comes home in fourth. Ty McLeod in fifth. Christian to catch. Evan Emery goes sixth and seventh. Boy, the battling back here. We watch these guys a lot. Lubomir Morris in eighth position. Jeroen de Cartel. And, Sean, I get the pleasure of announcing this one. Up 17 spots, Andrew Greenhall. Nice run from him. Yeah, really, really nice run from that rookie. And then we'll go to Miguel Antelain. We'll finish 11th. Lawrence, sudden strike to right there in 12th. Knute Martinson, 13th. 14th, Casper Thrawn. Manuel Hoyer actually does really well in this run. He uh, up 10 spots, and he'll finish in 15th. Alexis Merloso, another car up 10 spots. We'll finish 16th. Stephen Larkamp there, 17th. 18th, Silvio Hurt. He also gained 10 spots, Soup. Uh, then you go to Yuri Mochak there in 19th and 20th. Going to go to the hard luck man today, Lee Robinson. Mark Usher in the blackjack spot out of the points, as was Scott Newton, Bruno Dometer, Alexander Valdo, Enric Andre, Harrison Fish, Josh Thompson, who we might get to talk to. Talk about best of times. It was the worst of times. How about a win in the feature and a 27th in the sprint? Patrick Kessler runs out the field. Okay. Let's see if we can go here and talk to uh, who we want to talk to. Let's talk to the man who had a tale of two cities, and that is Josh Thompson. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the feature race first with Josh. Uh, that one was uh, pretty simple. Yeah, it was really surprising, to be honest, especially after having a really, really bad season. I actually put a lot of effort in with uh, Adam behind the scenes on well, today, just doing a lot of testing, getting the car to work. Surprisingly, put it on pole after two spins in the chicanes on lap one and lap three, so quite surprised. And seeing how close it was, I knew it was going to be quite a hard race. But, uh, got a nice start, just kept my head down, nice and consistent. I knew I didn't have the one lap pace, but I could see all the time coming across the line, it'd be like a one or a two, so I knew I could keep my gap. Quite nice, had a comfortable gap. Pit stops, simple, straightforward. But then Usher started putting me under some real, real pressure. I actually started panicking a little bit to be honest started making a few little mistakes because he was taking four or five tenths out of me but with about 10 minutes to go i was like the gap was six seconds and then by the end of the race i think it was like two seconds over the line so it was quite close then having the scare with uh, andre as well at the end that didn't really help the situation but eh, nice to wrap up a win especially after having so many dnfs and only two finishes Okay, we're not going to talk about the sprint race because you got into trouble early. That's We've seen that happen before. I know you have a lot to say about that. I want to go back to the point that, that Sean and I, it was one of the most interesting things we've ever seen where there was an instance in between you on your cool down lap and Enric Andre, who's still trying to finish his lap. And usually this wouldn't matter at all if it was a normal event, but, but because he needs to finish on the lead lap. And then when you make contact, he blinks away because he has the incident problem. Uh fascinating and they then eventually the the race stewards gave him his spot back fascinating though i i didn't even know what happened no, i obviously i like i pulled off i'd slowed down anyway because i'd finished my race which is fair enough but i think because i've slowed down i forgot all about him being a lap down right. technically so he has to finish lap so obviously i've gone to just take the normal racing line on the slowdown lap and he's gone for the same bit of track at the same time. And because he's hit me at higher speed, it looks like he's done it deliberate. But oh, no, no. I, I, know, I know I know, Andre and I know Enric and he's Sam. So there's nothing bad there. It was just one of those racing things. So I'm happy they gave him the reverse pole, to be honest, because nothing. It was, not, it, was really, it was one of those weird racing it was, things, really. It was really it was, weird. It surprised me. Very, very <laughs> strange circumstances of events there. Yeah, hey, yeah. congratulations on the, uh, on the win today. This is a... Uh, I believe your second. You already got one, don't you? No, was this is your first one. This is your no. first one you've got this season. Oh yeah, this season. I won one last season at Phillip yeah. Island, but that was a sprint race. So, but the feature's obviously the main one you want to win. So yeah, quite nice to have a feature race under my belt. 
Big points. Good job. We'll see you down the road. Yeah, see you later, guys. Josh Thompson, always a good interview. Sean, who you want to talk to? I, you know what? Why don't I go ahead and talk to the winner here of the sprint race? Let's talk to Adam Tierney. Adam, uh, what a great run, buddy. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your race there. Uh, you had to pick up several spots to get it done. Uh, this track is pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, this track is pretty difficult, and this car has a lot of curbs and chicanes and stuff, and it's just horrible to do in this car. But at the start of the race, I managed to get a decent start. I think I picked up one position, maybe an old side-by-side side with someone else. And then, then we went through the final few corners and managed to pick up someone else, I think. And then I managed to get myself into third. And then Ty and Stefan Herman were right in front of me. And Ty dropped it coming out of the final chicane, which is a bit of a shame because it was quite quick. And then Ty did the same thing out of turn four, I think it was. And he had a really good chance as well, so that's a shame for him. But yeah, everyone just kind of moved out my way, and then I just managed to cruise home in the end. Yeah, the seas kind of parted there for you. Listen, uh, the feature race was a tough one, um, and it was especially tough on you, but you finish in a position down there that allows you to start up close to the front here on the sprint race. Was it more about... Um, figuring out the track or was it really just starting position that really helped you uh gain this win in the sprint race um i think pace in the feature race and sprint race were pretty much the same so i think it was mainly just starting position because yeah, just, after i after i pit for the damage and stuff in the in the feature the pace was nearly there yeah it just seemed like the the passing opportunities were really really slim here uh, at circuits older today and uh you uh managed to just have a magnificent drive here in the sprint and uh for that we congratulate you sir and uh your second win the season it's got to feel pretty good yeah it's not too bad i think second driver to get more than one win this season i think phil's the only other person so it feels pretty good but at the same time it's more of just a recovery from feature race but see what happens in the points I, I believe that uh, that's going to leave you as the uh, the points leader here, if I'm getting my info correct. But yeah, we'll see when it all shakes out and it's actually official. But uh, again, congratulations to you today, Adam. Thank you. All right, Soup, that's Adam Tierney. And I think we got uh, one one driver left to ter- talk to. You've caught up with Evan Emery. Evan, a lot of action going on this event. I take notes on my clipboard. I look down and it says by your name, Evan Emery, and my in my handwriting, it looks like Burrito Sky, which makes no sense to me at all. So I have no questions for you unless there was something that related to Burrito Sky in the race. So why don't you tell us about your day? Well, um, I think the main aim was not to head towards the sky by mounting the, the curbs yeah. at the chicanes. And if you if you didn't do that and kept your front wing intact, you would uh, finish well. So I managed to do that and uh, ended up in 11th in the first race. And the second race, I did it again and avoided all the, the couple of two-car crashes in front of me and finished 7th. So uh, another good haul of points. You know, I know this track isn't a favorite of the drivers to race on. I don't know how you feel about it if you want to join them. From a fan's perspective, though, it puts on a pretty good show. Uh, yeah, it can make a pretty good show because there's quite a few overtaking opportunities with right. the chicanes. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not very fond of the track either. Um, maybe it's especially bad in the last car we drove in the in the Pro Mazda, but uh, Formula Renault is it isn't as bad. But um, yeah, I'm well, glad we've got the track out of the way. Out of the way, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get it out of the way. I know exactly how you feel. And a pretty good points day for Force Fissy and your teammate, Knut Martinson. You guys sit in third of the points. That's got to be nice to see as well. Yeah, I mean, top three is like an amazing achievement for the team because we're not, we're kind of top midfield drivers. But as long as you stay consistent, you can uh, climb high in the drivers and the, and the team's championship. So. I think I'm leading tier two, tier two championship now by like one point, so uh, it's getting it's getting tasty. But yeah. uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. 
you and your partner, uh, Knut Martinson, both sitting well up in the points there in the Tier 2 Championship, which we like a lot. That's fun to keep an eye on. Hey, congratulations on the racing today. Good luck the rest of the way. Cheers, Bill. Evan Emray had a good run today. Good points day for him and his team, Force Fishy. Sean, that's going to do it for everybody here today. Force Fissy, by the way. I knew what it is. <laughs> they give me a hard time when I call it Force Fishy. What we're going to do right now is give out some thanks, and we got to thank everybody at Apex Online Racing for organizing Formula No 2.0 League and for all the members who supported this broadcast. We know you have a lot of choices when you fly, and we really do thank you for flying GSRC. How about thanks to the company's equipment or the software that you see on the screen right now that our director uses to make this whole thing possible? I don't know what any of it does, but he does, and he, we like to thank them for the work they do. The original music that you heard today... That's Eric Eckholm and Casey Lalonde's responsibility. I'd like to thank them for what they do. See the screen for how to contact each of them. All right. And the AOR returns next week for round eight, Friday the 3rd of November at Phillip Island. Yes, Phillip Island. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, special announcement here. Okay, let's let's make sure we get this right. All right. This, is, this, is, this is for our American viewers. Okay. Next week's event will start at 425 Eastern due to European Daylight Savings. Here in America, we are not turning the clocks back this weekend. Why not? We will do that next weekend not on November 2nd. All right, so uh, be sure you pay attention to that. Catch us at 425 Eastern next Friday, and next Friday only, because the following Friday we'll return to our regular schedule. Now, GSRC will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us for more information about GSRC. Your best bet is www.globalsimracingchannel.com We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel and find us on Facebook by just typing in Global Sim Racing Channel all one word in the search bar you will find us. In the old days I would protest daylight saving times by not turning my clocks back but now my phone does it for me and really annoys me it like fights against me. On behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, Sean Ambrose, who is a strong believer in daylight saving time, our director, Amjad Yaman, who is ambivalent about it, and our camera artist, Dougie Beard, who supports daylight saving time. And also, how about some special help to our Lotus 49 GSRC broadcast race winner, Billy Bob Wright, who was the spotter today and is also very much against daylight saving time. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, and it might be an hour earlier, depending on your part of the globe, Race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.